Hello students and welcome to my online biology classes named Biology with Sanjay sir. We are studying a chapter PUC second year chapter number 14 the ecosystem and today's topic is nutrient cycles. This is the easiest topic which consists of two cycles in between and one difference table. First of all introduction to this topic. What do you mean by nutrient cycling? Before that, some of the nutrient examples. Dear students, some examples such as carbon, phosphorus, sulfur, nitrogen, etc. etc. These are the nutrients which are present in our body, present in majority of sources of the nature and they are used up by our body. It is the rule of the nature that whatever that the body is utilizing it should be recycled back. Along with the presence of these elements or the nutrients presence in the body, they are also even present in the atmosphere such as air, they are present in water, they are present in soil. Sometimes they are present in the form of gaseous and sometimes they are present in the form of the rock solids. So these nutrients should be used up by the atmosphere maybe in the form of air, gas, water etc etc and once again when we release them in the form of excretion, in the form of death, these nutrients should be recycled back to the atmosphere. So the movement of these nutrients from one organism to another organism taking the intermediates of biotic life and abiotic life and once again recycling of these own nutrients in most the atmosphere is called as the cycling of nutrients. Energy of the universe is constant. We know about it. So these energies should be coming from these nutrients and of course if we consider nutrients as the energy sources then we should have to consider another fact that these nutrients will also be recycled once again in the form of different resources. Once again I am telling you nutrients are important to our body, important to our system, important to our ecology, important to our nature. Some are useful, some are dangerous if we consume them in the higher quantities. But anyways, since this topic is with respect to the nutrients and their cyclic movement, we'll be considering in this form only. We'll get a word called as standing state. I have already mentioned one word called as a standing crop in my previous videos. Go and check it out. Today, the topic is standing state. The total concentration of carbon in any soil present in that area is called as the standing state. The total concentration of sulfur present in the soil in that area is called as the standing state. The total concentration of sulfur, the total concentration of phosphorus, the total concentration of nitrogen, the total concentration of carbon, the total concentration of any nutrient present in the soil or any soil is called as the standing state. Some soil conditions are very rich in composition. Some soil concentrations doesn't have much nutrients in them. When we say that the soil is rich, it indicates the presence of nutrient concentrations present in that source. And when we say the soil is poor, it means that the nutrient concentration is less or moderate in nature. So these nutrients and their presence in the soil makes the soil's richness and poor quality and the nutrient capacity of the soil is not at all same throughout the ecosystem or throughout the biosphere. It varies from place to place, it varies from ecosystem to ecosystem, it varies from a geographical area to another geographical area. Some areas or some ecosystems are rich in the nutrients and some are moderate and some are poor in nature. I say the nutrients come from the atmosphere such as air. I consider air as the reservoir. 
which means that the source wherein which you can see these nutrients. We say that the nutrients come from water or dissolved in water. I say that the water as the reservoir wherein which we can see the huge amount of nutrients. We say the soil is the reservoir and it means that the concentration of nutrients are more in case of this particular soil. Sometimes the nutrients are even present in rocks also and we say that the rocks are the reservoirs of these particular nutrients which commonly indicates that the sources from which the nutrient is releasing out. And sometimes even these places also come under deficiency or deficit or also loss. It is because the amount of entering into the system and amount of leaving the system when these two such as influx entering, efflux leaving when these two systems of that particular reservoir gets imbalanced then we see there is a kind of deficiency. Amount of phosphorus entering into the system if there is a change. Amount of phosphorus leaving the system if there is a change then we see that there is an imbalance in the entry and exit. We say that during that time there is a deficiency or deficit of that particular nutrient in that particular reservoir. Dear students, I hope you are understanding this is the basic introduction of this particular nutrient cycling topic. As I mentioned earlier, in this case we see two types of nutrient cycles. First one as the gaseous cycle and the second one as the sedimentary cycle. Behind me you are seeing the photo or a diagram or a table consisting the differences between these two. In some of the Karnataka theory examinations you can see the questions relating to this topic. Write the differences between the gaseous nutrient cycle and sedimentary nutrient cycle. You have to write two to three differences with examples of each. So from that particular photo or a diagram let us discuss the differences. In case of gaseous cycle as the name itself indicates about the reservoir or the sources from which the nutrients are coming up there of course the atmosphere such as the air. In case of sedimentary, the name itself indicates once again the nutrients are coming up or the reservoir or the source of the nutrients in case of sedimentary cycle is the earth, soil, earth's crust deep down into the soil's horizon. You have to dig up such as the gold, iron, Right? So try to understand these concepts with respect to having the chemistry in the mind. In some of the metallurgical reactions or some of the metallurgical concepts of chemistry you might have studied these things. So the first one is gaseous cycle the reservoir is atmosphere and sedimentary cycle the reservoir is the earth's crust or the soil. In case of uh, gaseous nutrient cycles of course the gas is the major content. As a nutrient which means that the nutrient in case of gaseous cycle is in the form of gas or in the form of vapor. But in case of a sedimentary cycle the nutrients are in the form of ores are solid like structure are mixed up with other compounds. Since it is gas it moves quickly and it is fast in nature because it is gas. The movement of molecules is faster in case of gaseous cycle considering the nutrients of gaseous cycle. But in case of the sedimentary cycle since it is hard ore like structure the movement of nutrients or the process of nutrient movement is quite slow. Some of the examples of gaseous cycle are carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle etc etc. Some examples of sedimentary cycle such as phosphorus cycle, sulfur cycle, etc etc. Dear students I hope you studied or you understood this the basic examples the easiest explanation of this particular topic. Now let us enter into one of the example of nutrient cycling and that is carbon cycle. Remember they have taken two examples one as the carbon cycle and another one as the phosphorus cycle. Carbon as the 
gaseous cycling example and phosphorus as the sedimentary cycle example. In our theory examinations also, there might be a question of 5 marks that to explain the process of carbon cycle as the nutrient cycling. And there might be another question relating to the phosphorus cycle explaining the nature and the nutrient recycling of phosphorus in the ecosystem. Both questions will be for 5 marks. But anyways, we are here to understand what is actually present in these things. Let us take the NCRT textbook and we'll go with respect to line by line explanations of this particular topics. The first one is the carbon cycle. Point number one that the carbon is present in our body. Carbon is present in the atmosphere. Carbon is present in the water. Carbon is present even in the soil in the different forms. So where actually this carbon is present in our body? When we say there is a production of glucose, there is an utilization of the glucose, there are continuous metabolic reactions with respect to glucose. We say that C6H12O6 is nothing but a carbon, hydrogen and oxygen combined derivative. So carbon is present there. Carbon is present almost many parts of our body. Approximately around 49% of carbon is present in our body as the dry biomass. Students, I already told you what is the meaning of dry biomass when I was explaining about ecological pyramids and the pyramid of biomass. So if we leave the water, if we leave the blood, if we leave other protoplasmic, neuroplasmic, sarcoplasmic liquid contents, then we will get the dry mass or dry biomass of our body and that total concentration around 49% of that total concentration is made up of the carbon itself. So it is a quite interesting topic that our body is almost 50% the correct point is 49% it is made up of carbon and since we have got the highest concentration of water in our earth that is the three-fourth of our entire earth is made up of water or filled with water around 71 percent of the carbon is dissolved in the oceans and which is responsible for regulating this carbon into the atmosphere i mentioned two points one 49 percent of carbon is present in our body and 71 percent of the carbon is dissolved in the oceans and this particular carbon cycle should have to move from one organism to another organism, right? From one place to another place, right? From one resource to another resource, right? From one reservoir to another reservoir, right? So since this is an example of a gaseous cycle, of course, it is present in the atmosphere in the form of gas. Now from this place, it is entering into the biotic life through the abiotic life. Now this one is entering into the biotic life through the abiotic life. Maybe taking via oceans etc etc. Taking so many ways it is entering our body in the form of food, in the form of soil, in the form of water, in the form of ocean, in the form of air, in the form of biotic life, in the form of abiotic life. I hope you are understanding it. They say that around 4 into 10 to the power of 13 kg of carbon is fixed in the atmosphere by the plants through the process of photosynthesis. The number is 4 into 10 to the power of 13 kg of carbon. It's not small number. Now the point is, sir, what do you mean by fixation of carbon? If this much of amount of carbon is present in the nature, what is the meaning of fixation of carbon? Conversion of the carbon into other forms of usable compounds such as carbohydrates, such as proteins, such as lipids, etc, etc is called as fixation of the carbon. In our body, they are present in the form of carbohydrates. In our body, they are present in the form of proteins. In, the, in our body, they are present in different forms and that is called as fixed carbon, utilized carbon, transformed carbon, which is utilizable for majority of metabolic reactions and construction of our internal body growth. So once again, I'm telling you that in the nature, we have got around 4 into 10 to the power of 13 kg of carbon and that is being fixed by the plants through the process of photosynthesis. We utilize the carbon dioxide for the work of photosynthesis. 
and from that they perform the nature's the most respected process that is photosynthesis providing energy to itself and providing energy to the entire biosphere now when the carbon is taken up by the plants utilized by the animals now how can anyone say that once again this carbon should have to enter into the atmosphere right what are the different modes carbon enters into the atmosphere by the respiration of animals carbon enters into the atmosphere by the decomposing work of bacteria and fungus on the dead and decaying matter carbon enters into the atmosphere by the automobiles by the refrigerators by the industries etc etc there are so many ways the carbon can once again enter re-enter into the atmosphere and doing so many internal works so many respiration so many circulation so many fixation so many metabolic reactions during this time even some of the carbon is being lost also as i mentioned some examples such as burning fossil fuels automobiles industries deforestation from a lot of these sources carbon can enter into the atmosphere against the greenhouse gases and cause some of the harmful effects we are not here to uh, study about those things but i'm just saying that these are the basic points from which the carbon can enter into the atmosphere of course in the form of carbon monoxide carbon dioxide etc etc the scientists say the nature says that our atmosphere is being polluted because of over utilization or over release of this carbon into the atmosphere though we are made up of carbon though we are completely filled with the carbon but over consumption of anything is dangerous to us dangerous to our nature deforestation that is cutting up the entire forest and making it in a barren land it is a major source of loss of oxygen in the atmosphere and increase of carbon or carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide in the atmosphere vehicular burning is also not at all a simple task so many vehicles utilizing diesel and petrol once again from these sources carbon dioxide will enter into the atmosphere causing a deadliest reactions in the nature we are already facing those kind of uh, uh, reactions and we are responsible for it anyways students in this small topic wherein which we discussed about how actually the carbon enters our body what are the different sources or reservoirs and how actually the carbon releases into the atmosphere what are the different sources and reservoirs from this the carbon is being transferred from one organism to another organism from one place to another place by taking different modes via ways directions and once again it enters into the atmosphere this is called as cycling of nutrients and the example is carbon dear students i hope you understood this particular smallest topic easiest topic that we've been studying from our sslc background and if you understood this video a basic easiest uh, video like my video share my video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel that is important because in the future you'll be getting notifications instantly i'll definitely meet you in the next video that is a promise and until that time god bless you take care